This is a run-through of the Unreal Engine Fundamentals curriculum and its 15 sessions. For the course, we'll be using Unreal Engine 5.3.1 and with our project file open, you can see we have a folder called Unreal Engine Fundamentals and in there we will have one folder for each of the sessions. Before diving into the session content themselves, for anybody wanting to follow along with the video tutorials on their own, there'll be a how to install video. We'll also have an introduction to some of the Unreal Engine templates and specifically to understand what the game mode is and its importance in Unreal Engine. We'll also introduce the UI and impart some great navigation tips and general orientation and working effectively and efficiently in editor. Session one is kit bashing. We'll be working with a reference image by Saul Kim and we will use that to learn some of the modeling tools. We'll impress upon the importance of working in real world scale We'll create tools to create different Boolean operations. We'll bring in assets from other DCCs. We'll work with Quixel Megascans, decals. We'll migrate assets from other projects. We can then do some world building and use the post-process volume to art direct and grade our scene. With our scene built, we can then come back in and use that environment to create our first cinematic. We'll look at the static mesh and skeletal mesh editor. We will understand how to use light channels to create unique lighting effects. We'll learn about the camera, focal plane, work with atmospheric fog, add light shafts to our scene, bring in some Niagara particle systems, allocate an animation to our many character, and then render out our first cinematic using the movie render queue. The material session will probably cover up to material four or five in the session. The video itself goes up to nine examples, so people can carry on after the session and build upon their knowledge in their own time. We'll demonstrate the use of Alpha and Lerp as a powerful transition tool create texture master materials, understand how to set up and work with material parameters, and how to create material instances manually and later dynamically. We will look at world aligned textures and when to use them, and the power of decals to add variation. Looking at character animation, we'll introduce the Mixamo characters and their animations and demystify the pitfalls of importing. We can look at some techniques like the random sequence player in the animation blueprint to add some general interest into your scene. Great for background characters in animation or film or architectural visualization. We will then also learn how to use Mixamo characters in sequencer, blend animations, and work with bone matching and bake out animation sequences. We'll now use the assets created in the material and the animation session to create our first real time project. We'll start by importing a datasmith file of the Alternet building and surrounding area, swap out all the materials, organize the project into levels work with the variant manager to create some design variations all within the same scene and look at how we can also use media plates to add fog planes, do some chroma keying and creating our alternate prototype digital screens. With my first blueprint, we will get orientated in the blueprint graph. We will demystify the construction script and look at how we can work with individual variables to create a flexible blueprint actor. We'll introduce key concepts of blueprint flow and work with conditions and enumerators. 
We'll cover working with blueprint timelines and demonstrate the power of combining all those techniques. We'll reinforce the use of alpha and lerp to transition between states, but now in the blueprint graph. Expanding further, we will look at working with struct and data tables in blueprints to organize our data. We will learn how to create some title screen widgets and a credit widget and develop our Outernet project into a digital product where we can navigate the space in first person character and interact with our level and change the content on the screens of the Outernet environment. We can also swap out the game mode and experience the environment in virtual reality. Text techniques in Unreal are a little convoluted, but I think it's a really valuable session to share some techniques of how you can get text into your projects for different needs. We'll bring in true type font files, create our own distance field font, which need to be created for the text render component, and understand the difference between working with widget components in world space and screen space as a means of annotating your project and demonstrate how these techniques can be used creatively and in surprising ways. With Blueprint Tools, we'll be working with more advanced techniques back in the construction script to create grid and spline-based tools. There'll be a whole host of tools in the folder for people to work with and Blueprint's fully commented for them to deconstruct those actors in their own time. We will populate our scenes in a much quicker way by creating tools to increase our productivity and also look at how to animate along a spline and create a cinematic Blueprint actor. With Blueprint Queries, we will look at collision hit, overlap event, line traces, and how we can qualify other actors using these querying techniques. We can then build relationships between our actors in our scene and demonstrate how to pass variable values between Blueprint actors using these methods. These are all really valuable data passing techniques that can be used creatively and practically in many scenarios. Blueprint Useful Techniques gives us some key knowledge to really unlock our creative potential. It starts by showing us how we can pass through the location of any object to drive visual effects in a material. It looks at how we calculate distance to drive animation and properties in Blueprint Actors. And we can pass through to other Unreal Engine systems. We have one example where we are calculating distance and then passing variables through to five subsystems, including Metasounds, Morph Targets, Niagara, Animation Blueprint, and the Material Graph. We'll also look at chaos physics and cloth simulation. We'll create a flag and a washing line example. We'll bring in an FBX, make sure they are skeletal mesh, and then weight paint the vertices to determine which aspects of our skeletal mesh are animated. We'll work in conjunction with Unreal Engine's wind system actor and use the wind system to drive our simulations and understand the difference between direction and point wind. Moving on, we will also look at the landscape and water system and build upon the auto landscape material created by Unreal Sensei. It's a fantastic resource and great starting point and I'll show you how to expand upon it and use some of the other tools available like the foliage system. We will look at creating layer info assets to add foliage procedurally and show some paint techniques for masking our layers. We'll sculpt the landscape from scratch and introduce the water system. We'll do a slightly deeper dive into metahumans and first look at how we create them, bring them into Unreal Engine, 
and look at their full anatomy by looking at their blueprint in detail. Retarget our Mixamo animations to the metahuman skeleton and bring them to life in our scenes. We'll look at how we can work with metahumans in Sequencer. We'll also look briefly at the use of Control Rig in the Sequencer and explore how we can use the base skeleton creatively. Last but not least, we'll also look at audio in Unreal Engine. We'll look at bringing audio in purely as a soundtrack, as a direct 2D, but also working with audio spatially, firstly in Sequencer, and adding attenuation assets so we can control the fall off of any audio in our scenes. Then we'll go back to our Outernet project and create a dynamic audio actor where we can swap out audio files in our real-time Outernet project. As we can see, Unreal Engine is a powerhouse for content creation. It offers us a vast ecosystem of tools, and its potential is huge. Unreal Engine Fundamentals has been designed to demystify its foundational systems, to ignite creativity, and to enable individuals to vividly articulate their ideas. This baseline knowledge serves as a catalyst that underpins future modules that we can develop on a school-by-school -school basis and broaden the impact and adoption of Unreal Engine to aid real-time research and innovation between schools and with industry.